Welcome to Vancouver Business Network, where entrepreneurs learn, network, and grow. I'm Roger Killen, the organizer. This evening, Larissa Banting is training us on how to power up our profits with free publicity. Larissa, let's start with a couple of get to know you questions. Okay, great. Firstly, what exactly is publicity? Oh gosh, well, publicity is basically working with the media. So that is earned media. And that means that we're working with television, radio, newspapers, magazines, blogs, podcasts, uh, and you're not paying to be in that. It is, you are there on your own merit. So these are the reporters and, and the journalists and podcasters, and they feel that you have a message that will resonate with their audience and they want to use their megaphone to their audience to do so. Beautiful. And so that, that word free uh, made my ears really perk up. We, we entrepreneurs, we love that word, don't we? It's now my, great. my second question is, uh, why does somebody in business need publicity at all? Well, let me put it to you this way. How can someone become your customer or client if they don't know you exist? That is why you need publicity, right? Yes, you can have advertising and advertising is wonderful. However, that's one piece of the puzzle. Uh, this, the the study, studies show that if you are in the media, that is seven times more credible to the consumer than an ad because your, the thing with an ad is that you are the one driving the narrative. If it's the media, it's a, a neutral third party that is giving you their stamp of approval. Really quickly, I'll, I'll give you a little analogy. <clears throat> Imagine you see an ad for some new Italian restaurant in the newspaper. You think, okay, that looks interesting, yeah, whatever. Then you're talking to your, your best friend and they're like, oh my God, Roger, this Italian restaurant is like the best thing since this side of Florence. You have to go, their lasagna is divine. Now, who were you going to believe, your best friend or the ad? I'm going to believe my best friend. And that is the media, right? Because the same thing, you believe your best friend, your best friend has zero to do with that restaurant. If you go and eat there or not, it's not going to have any bearing on their pocketbook. And they, I mean, so they're giving you this very like, you know, uh, objective viewpoint. And that's exactly what the media does. Because if you're, say, you know, in the Toronto Star, if you're in the National Post and Globe and Mail, they're not going to promote someone who is not, in their eyes, an expert to be believed. So any for everyone who sees that article and sees your name in there is like, wow, okay, this is someone we have to pay attention to because they're credible, they know what they're doing, and I'm, I need to listen to them. They can see an ad for you in that newspaper and they're not going to feel the same way because you put that ad in there. You're the one saying you're the best thing since sliced bread. Ah, okay. All right, got it. I'm now a, a, a totally sold on the value of publicity and listening with, with huge ears. Uh, Larissa, do you have slides you want to share or are you I no, I do. I do have slides that I can right, run through. So let me get you set up as mm. a uh, co-host. Okay. You and, are I, listen, and everybody, if you want to, you know, feel free to have questions. I will answer them after the end of the presentation. Okay. Okay. So you don't want to take questions uh, during your presentation. You want to take what? them after. Well, if I'm if I'm running through my slides, I don't know if I'll be able to see the questions unless you want I'll, to. I'll um, I'll re I'll read them out to you. Perfect. Let's, let's, let's do it that way. Along. All right. So, Perfect. audience members, uh, feel uh, just type your questions into the chat, and then periodically, I'll interrupt Larissa and pose them uh, to her. Uh, your this uh, video is being recorded, and you'll be provided with a copy of the link. Uh, before my bedtime tonight. Larissa, okay. take it away. She's all okay. yours. 
Here we go. All right. So now I have to tell you, I am not, I'm a better publicist than a technician, but here we go. Between us, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. <clears throat> okay. So we're going to learn about publicity and how you can use it to, pro to power up your, your profits and make bank. Okay. So very quickly, uh, who the heck am I? I'm Larissa Banting. I, I am accredited in public relations with the Canadian Public Relations Society. And what that word salad means is that I went through a, a very rigorous year long process, uh, which still keeps me up at night with cold sweats, even though I did it 20 years ago. Um, and there's only a few hundred of us who have actually attained this. So it means I know a little something about PR. Um, I have been a publicist for various films and, and television projects. I've worked uh, one-off projects for Bombay, Sapphire Gin, City of St. Albert. Fun fact, I was actually in charge of the crisis communications department for the City of St. Albert for Y2K. If any of you remember, you know, the world was going to end at the stroke of midnight on New Year's 1999. Thank goodness it didn't. But um, so that's my background. I have a all over the place. Um, I also was a journalist. I had my weekly dance column in two different arts magazines. And I'm also the author of the award-winning Costa Rica, The Brad Guide. As a entrepreneur and business owner, I have also been in the media, uh, in IBM, Reader's Digest, Huffington Post, Martha Stewart Living Radio. And I'm also the founder of LBPR, which is a boutique public relations uh, agency. Okay, so why- and you're, and you're coming to us all the way from? San Jose, Costa Rica. Ah. Yeah. Oh, welcome. I mean, thank you. And Gracias. For you, it's nine o'clock-ish, nine o'clock. It's nine o'clock at night. Yeah, I uh, I made the jump. I um, really quickly, I grew up uh, just outside of Hamilton, Ontario, went to school in Toronto, lived in Montreal, lived in Edmonton, was uh, came down here in 2001 to work on a movie set um, for CTV Network. And I met this very handsome Costa Rican actor, uh, left everything behind to move to Costa Rica in January. I'd known him for six weeks. Everyone thought I'd lost my mind. And uh, I moved to Costa Rica in January 2002. And I had to pivot because, um, you know, way back machine, we didn't have Wi-Fi back then. We had dial-up internet. So I couldn't do my job as a publicist. I pivoted. I opened one of the first destination wedding planning companies in Central America and using publicity to get the word out. Um, in my fourth year, I had been named top 30 in the world by Destination Weddings and Honeymoons magazine because I was seen in all these, these different wedding magazines and in the media. And we hit seven figures in my fourth year of business. So I'm living proof that um, PR works. And that was without any ads, because back then there, there was no social media, there was no Facebook. The only advertising I had available to me were the glossy magazines. And um, you could buy a car for the price of an ad in those wedding magazines back then. So this is, what, this is why I'm so passionate about publicity because I've made it work for my clients, but I've also made it work for me personally. Could you all please mute yourselves? Thank you. Uh, unmute, I'm sorry, mute yourselves and type your questions into the chat should you have any. Thank you. Okay, great. So that's a little backstory about me. Okay, so what the heck is publicity? We talked a little bit about it uh, earlier and, and the answer is yes, you really do need it. Okay, so it is earned media. And the different, what we say earned media is that you are literally, um, the different outlets are saying that your story, your voice is worthy of them promoting to their audience. Completely free, there is no cost. So that's not like, it's not like Facebook where you're paying for an ad. It's, um, I will say there are sometimes some outlets that have what they call advertorials. And I'm sure you've probably seen these. They look like an article, but when you start reading them, it sounds like an advertisement. And so that's a situation where like you're paying to be in that publication. And the thing is when you're approaching the media, it is not salesy. This is not marketing. It's like you are having to, it's about having something that's newsworthy and that's timely. 
Uh, think about yourself. Do you want to read an ad or do you want to read an article that's going to give you something juicy that you can walk away with and either you know apply to your business or you have an interesting nugget of information? That is earned media. You want to be that juicy nugget. All right. So the beauty of this is that you're using their, like the media's large engaged audience to amplify your message. So think about um, you know, like, let's just say like the Globe and Mail, getting into an article, it being featured in the Globe and Mail, how many hours would you have to spend on social media, on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, on LinkedIn to be able to be seen by that many people? Uh, I'll give you a really quick, um, I was in a, a featured in an article on uh, uh, Hello, Gig Hello Giggles, which is a blog created by uh, Zoe Deschanel, who is an actress. She gets 1.3 million people on that blog. So it's like, how, how many, I don't know, even in my entire year of being on, on social media, I would be able to hit 1.3 million people, but I did so with one article. So that is the power of media. The thing is, is that you can make a, a, a much deeper connection with your audience because you know, if you're on a podcast and they're interviewing for like you for like 20, 30 minutes, uh, if you're in an article that is, you know, a thousand words, you can get so much deeper into what you offer as opposed to like an ad or even a social media post. The other thing is that the media, the pe people trust the media over advertising. Because again, you know, you're not driving the narrative. It's a neutral third party. So that's seven times more credible. You think about the whole no like trust journey that your customer has to go through. They're saying, you know, it used to be what, seven to 10 touch points. I just heard a stat today is now 27. They need to hear your message 27 times before they're ready to say yes and pull out their wallet. Yeah, that's like, think about it. If you have to try to get in front of someone with an ad 27 times, like ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching. But if you do that with the media and you can get deep into that, you're gonna shorten that journey considerably. By the time they read that article, they hear you in a podcast, they're like, yeah, I like this person. I, I trust this person. I feel like I know this person. They're the person I wanna do business with. That is the power of it. It can also shows you the, the, your value and it also builds a very positive image. So this is why everyone I don't care where you are in your journey. If you're just starting out, you've, if you're a veteran of 20 years, everyone is ready for publicity. And this is why you need it because it's going to just blow up your business. Okay, so creativity is king. Um, we're getting down to the logistics of, of what PR, how to approach PR. Think about yourself. What attracts you to listen to a certain podcast or pay attention to a certain article? It's the interest, it's the creativity. Something hooks you. And journalists are the same way. They're looking for interesting angles. The unexpected grabs your attention. So you want to come at your particular story with an, a unique angle that is going to make people sit up and take notice. You also need to make it newsworthy. You know, you could have a great story, but if it's not kind of in sync with what's going on in the world right now, it's not going to be newsworthy. For example, would you start pitching a story about Easter right now? Well, no, because it's not, it's not the right time. Just like you wouldn't go and pitch a story about, you know, say Hanukkah in the middle of summer. You have to think about where are you in the, the year and what is going to be timely. So that's what we talk about with making it newsworthy. Right now, you know, COVID is still in the news cycle. So if you can tie a story into something with COVID, you're pretty much guaranteed you can get coverage. Okay, so I'm gonna teach you right now how to get your first feature. And this is something I call mining your story. All right, so I want you to think about your life and your business like a, like a gold mine and you literally have nuggets strewn throughout you just have to know where to pick them up 
So this is not about thinking, okay, I am a book author, so I'm going to just focus on trying to get into book reviews. Uh, look at your entire life. You have so many more avenues open to you to start reaching your clients. And the important thing about this is that just as you are multifaceted, your audience is multifaceted. They're not just reading one section of the newspaper. They're not just listening to one particular radio station or one particular podcast. They are multi, they have many different interests. They have hobbies. They've gone to different universities or schools. They belong to charities just as you do. So the more you can get into those different avenues, the more likely you are to start getting publicity. So let's start thinking about these are like, these are the low hanging fruit, right? This is like really easy to get into. Where did you go to school? Like if you've went to university or college, they have some kind of an alumni magazine or newspaper or newsletter. They want to showcase alumni who have gone on to succeed because of course it makes them look good. They're looking for these types of stories. So if you can find some way to tie in your time at that school with your present success, that is, that's a golden nugget. You know, it's like, oh, well, you know, my time, like for me, for example, like I went, I went to York University in Toronto and I was a dance major. Um, <clears throat> my time at York in the dance department taught me how to be flexible. And so that flexibility has allowed me to roll with the punches with what's going on with COVID and be able to pivot just as I pivoted in many of my dance routines as a, a dancer doing shows with the York dance team. All right, so you see how you can start working that in. So you find some way to hook your present situation, your present success with something you did as a student at your university or college and you pitch that story angle. And that the reason why this is important is we as humans, our DNA is hardwired for tribalism. Now, I know that that's a, it can have a double meaning, but from its most intrinsic, we, we seek out people who are like us or are part of our same community because that was how we would survive many, many, many millennia ago, but that is still with us. So we are looking for people who are part of our community from the same school, liking the same sports team, living in the same city. Like imagine you are in the middle of Florence, Italy. You see someone walking around with, you know, a baseball cap with like the, you know, the, the Canucks. You're going to feel like, oh my gosh, like you're from, you're from BC, you're from Vancouver. I'm from Vancouver. I have to go talk to this person in the middle of Italy right? You probably would never talk to that person if you saw them on the street corner <laughs> in Vancouver, but because you're outside of your home and you see them, it's like, you're part of my tribe. You are part of my community. And all of a sudden you feel that connection. It's the same with what I'm teaching right now. You want to create that connection because when we feel connected to somebody, we want to do business with them. We want to we want to be feel like, okay, you're part of my group. I'm cool. You're part of that group. So you must be cool. So I want to do business with you. So this is why this is a very, very powerful approach and nothing against the major, like, you know, I want to get into Forbes. I want to get into entrepreneur. Those are wonderful. And they're, they have incredible uh, visibility and credibility, um, you know, growing for you, but some of your most powerful business connections are going to be found in these smaller publications. Um, I, I've, I've been doing work with uh, D David Tutera, who's one of the you know, major event producers in the world. And he had a very interesting story. He was like, you know, I, when I first started out 30 years ago, he had an article in a little tiny, like a hometown newspaper. There was two women who cut out that article, kept it. Over the years, he has done the kids' bar mitzvahs, bat mitzvahs, the weddings, anniversaries, the company parties. Those two women alone have accounted for millions of dollars of his business. 
Meanwhile, he had an article a couple of years ago in People Magazine, I think it was on his own wedding. You know, it was a big fancy affair. And while it was incredible, like, oh, wow, you were in People Magazine. He cannot count one event that came out of that actual article. So that little rinky dink, small new, you know, hometown newspaper has resulted in millions of dollars of business for his company. Whereas the big top tier act got him great credibility, but it didn't bring him business. So this is something I want to really impart to you. Never discount how powerful some of these smaller publications can be. So that goes on. Hobbies. Are you a distance runner? Are you a figure skater? Do you curl? Do you, uh, I don't know, do knitting? All of those have some sort of an outlet for magazines, podcasts, newsletters. All of that is, those are wonderful outlets for you to get involved with. Charities. Do you, are you someone who supports a charity, like through money? Are you a volunteer? Are there challenges you've overcome? You know, like maybe you have some, maybe you're diabetic. Okay, there's a lot of outlets out there for the diabetes community. They're always looking for people for stories. Maybe you have some special skills. If you have won an award by, oh my goodness, you have to let everyone know. This is no time to be shy. You know, whatever you want to win some sort of an award, you have to show it from the rooftop because it's going to make your current clients feel like, yes, I'm, in, I'm with the right person, but also it's going to attract new business. And even your business origin story, you might think, oh, who wants to hear about that? Like, that's no big deal. The thing is, where you are might, you know, be further along the path, but when you first started, there could be someone right this minute who's in the exact same pair of shoes as you were thinking, I don't know if I can do this. Like, do I really have this, you know, oh, is this the right path? Am I crazy for doing this? They might read your business origin story and see how you have come along to success and feel like, okay, well, if they did it, I can do it. And think about how powerful that is if you can affect even just one life. So these are your nuggets where you've gone to school, your hobbies, your charities, the challenges, your special skills, your awards, and even your business origin story. All of those can be mined for amazing publicity opportunities. There okay, is so mm -hmm. a, a question. I, I've been asked to put in your website. I'm assuming it's larissabanting.com? Yes, it is. Okay, great. Thank you. Carry on. No, yes. no, no further questions. Okay. Great. I'm the only Larissa Banting in the world. No it's a very small family and I have an unusual name. So yeah, I'm, you will find me by typing my name. Okay, so we have now come to understand, okay, we can start looking for these things in our life. And um, so now we just start digging. So for example, say you were a distance runner, you could put together a story idea, you know, because as, as everyone who's ever done a marathon knows, you hit the wall. There's that one point when you're training, you just feel like you can't go any further and it takes every ounce of energy and mental fortitude to get through that wall. As business owners, we have all hit that wall. And that is a great analogy to, as a story, like, okay, I've hit that wall as a business owner, I've hit that wall as a runner. And that experience as a runner has helped me break through that wall as a business owner and made me a better success. So it's an unexpected story, but it's going to be a story that resonates with everyone who has run and owns a business. They can understand that. Um, that unexpected out of the blue is what makes people do a double take. For example, there have, these are real life examples of, of uh, stories. A forensic pathologist who is a ballet dancer, a news presenter who loves bridge construction of things. <laughs> And a famous author who is a beekeeper. I mean, those are all their hobbies, but they were able to get publicity because people weren't expecting, you know, an author to be a beekeeper. It's like, oh, that's really interesting. And even though it might not seem like a big deal to the author, to the rest of the world, it's a really interesting angle. The same thing can happen for you. Okay. So never discount what you do as being, eh, no one wants to hear about that. People are fascinated by other people. 
Okay, so now we know like, okay, we've got these juicy nuggets that we're going to shine and send out to the world. But now we have to figure out how do we tell that story? And this is about what we call pitching. Just like in baseball, we take that ball, we pitch it and we try and hit a home run. It's actually a lot easier than you might think. It's not brain surgery. Okay, so first of all, we have to figure out who are we going to tell the story to. Start researching the publications for the niche stories. Literally, there is, like I said earlier, something in everywhere, podcasts, blogs, newspapers, magazines, or something for everything that you can possibly think of. Um, crocheting, for example, there are 12 magazines just on crocheting and knitting. Who knew? Uh, so you could look up Crochet World, Crochet Now, your crochet knitting and interweave. Um, what you want to do is take a Google spreadsheet and put those the names of those different publications there. For now, my recommendation is just start with three because that's an easy number, it's gonna be manageable and then you can start to add on from there. All right, then you, get, you need to know the journalists because this is the other thing. Uh, you can't just pick up the phone and say, hi, New York Times, I'm Larissa. Can you write a story about me? You have to think about who is the right journalist who is going to resonate with my story. Think about a, a newspaper. You have the city section, you have national, you have finance, cooking, lifestyle, sports, entertainment, fashion. Uh, you can't just throw a story idea at any of those sections and expect it to hit. You have to go to the right one. So figure out what section you are going to be focusing on and then research to see who is writing about the type of stories you want to pitch. It's not, it's not a lot of work, it's a little bit of work, but if you take this extra step, it's going to be much more effective. So see who's writing about those types of stories and then make note of their name and put it in that spreadsheet. Now you need to be able to reach out to them. So you wanna find their email. Usually if it's online, if you click on their, their name, the byline, it's going to bring up either their, um, like their about them page. If they're a freelancer, it normally will take you to their website. Because I mean, a lot of outlets now, especially with magazines and newspapers, they are using freelancers because they simply don't have the budget to have a whole in-house staff, um, which is actually, you know, for you as someone pitching a story, it's not such a bad thing because a freelancer is going to have many more outlets that they're writing for, which means more opportunities for you to get your story out there. Now, um, normally if, if they're on staff, you know, that you should be able to find their email. If they don't, there's a couple of extensions you can get on Chrome. One is um, findthatlead.com, which is an app. The other is hunter.io, and that's a Chrome extension. So if you go on to, let's say, the website for like National Post, if you click on hunter.io, it'll bring up the list of all of the emails of everyone on staff. So if you can't find that person and they are a staff writer, you can still see this, the formula that they use. So for example, if it's like, if it's like bob.smith at uh, the torontostar.com, if it's, you know, if you're looking at Felicia Humphrey, it's probably going to be felicia.humphrey at the torontostar.com. If they are a freelancer, my suggestion is look for them on Twitter. Twitter is where all the media hangs out and it is fair game. So go in there. If you, if, you're, if you see a couple of, you know, these, these uh, journalists that you want to connect with, find them on Twitter, follow them and start to interact. Now, maybe for like two weeks, um, you know, comment on their tweets, retweet them so that you start creating this relationship with them. So they start to know who you are. And then when you go to pitch them, it's not completely out of the blue. They, they are familiar somewhat with who you are. <clears throat> My caveat, do not follow them on Facebook. Do not follow them on Instagram or bother them because for them, that is their personal private space. 
And if you infringe on their space on Facebook and Instagram, they're going, they're going to feel like you are kind of stalking them. Okay. But Twitter, have at it. It's absolutely open territory. And also LinkedIn, like, um, because that's a professional uh, social media site. There okay, is so a question uh, from, yep. uh, can you talk about tools which are focused on SaaS related brand promotion? Tools for SaaS promoted. I don't really, well, you mean like for promoting software Gar as a service? Garav, could you unmute and uh, just uh, verbalize your uh, question for Larissa? Sure. Hi, Larissa. Sorry, Hi. I didn't want to, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, it's fine. But, uh, actually, you know, I have a, a new startup a, a learning management company called classtrack.com. Mm -hmm. Since, um, uh, of course, Edia is helping me in, in other like social media activities and everything. But I wanted to uh, know if you have some strategy for, uh, you know, startups for, uh, you, which are into software or which are into learning management systems and what kind of role can, uh, you know, can a, a publicist or, or what kind of services should we be looking for to promote our brand and let people know about it? Because right now I've seen that uh, anyone who knows about class track is really impressed, but there are very few people who know about it. So I'm not able to jump uh, through that wall, you know, uh, in spite of trying hard. Okay, so here's the thing. The public don't, they don't care about a brand. They care about how something is going to impact their life. How, what's, humans at their most basic, we're pretty selfish. <laughs> Like, let's just be honest. We're always thinking what's in it for me. So you, as someone who has a SaaS, you have to think about what is in it for the, for the user. How is this going to make their life better? How is it going to make their, you know, their business work better? How's it going to save them time, save them money? What are the implications of they take your product and start putting it into their life? So that's where you have to start thinking about don't think about you as the brand because no one cares they care about their life and when we approach the media we have to approach them as being a partner you have the information that is going to help their audience have a better life it's, it's i mean in that way it is like marketing um, but ultimately the writers, the podcasters, the newspapers, it all comes down to the audience. How can they best serve their audience? And they, that all comes down to, they need to give the, the audience the most interesting, comprehensive information possible so that, that the audience can then go away and make their life better. So you need to look at what is the story behind your business. Mm -hmm. Yes, you have this wonderful software, but, but what's the benefit? Mm -hmm. Oh, it, it makes um. so what, what's the benefit of your, of your software? Well, the main benefit of our software is that uh, it makes life really easy for teachers and uh, school admins to manage everything in a single software rather than having to, uh, you know, use different uh, software, specialized software of, uh, and manage different subscriptions. So in one, uh, one uh, subscription, they get everything and affordability is our um, uh, USP basically. Okay, you know, well, well, just make, hold on one second. Sure. So that's the, that's the benefit. What's the benefit beneath that benefit? So what, what does it matter that they have everything in, in one software? What is, what is that, how does that make their life better? It will save their time and it will, uh, it will basically give them more information uh, or the, the right information at the right time. Uh, okay, well, hold on. What's the benefit behind them having more time and having the information av avail uh, available to them at their fingertips? Well, less stress and more money. Okay, and what's the benefit behind having less stress and more money? Well, it'll do wonders to their business. Okay, well, as a, as a, as a, as a, okay, so it'll do wonders for the business, but what's the, what's the, what's that benefit? What is the tangible benefit? Oh, I have more time. I have more money. What does that matter to a teacher or to a school administrator? What, how is that going to make their personal life better? 
Well, they will probably have uh, less time to devote out of their uh, paid teaching hours to to do something like this because a lot of teachers, you know, they bring their work home uh, just to prepare for the next class and you know prepare all the uh, arranging all the files to be in the same folder and all. Right. This. Okay. So I want to interrupt you right now. So what does so if they're busy doing all this stuff after school, how is that impacting? their their personal life well they will have more free time for their families and for their uh you know their own work rather than worrying about so basically when they leave the school they don't have to worry about anything else because class track takes care of everything in a very streamlined way so right so so sorry i'm going to interrupt you again right. so by having time for their family what will that allow them to gain well, some kind of job satisfaction, which they might have before, but they will have more of it. And I know I'm not never going to be able to answer the right in the right way. So why okay. don't you tell me? Okay, because <laughs> here's the thing. As humans, what is the most basic need that we have is to love and be loved. That's right. So by having that, so, they, so if they're spending all of their free, free time working at schoolwork, then they're neglecting their family, they're neglecting their kids. And next thing you know, their kids off to university and they don't know where the last 19 years have gone. That's right. Right. So you have to like that is and this goes for everybody. You have to think about what is the benefit beneath the benefit, because as humans, we really are working at the same level. And it's though that is the pain point. It's like you don't want to be the mom that, you know, you look back and your kid has suddenly, you know, packed their bags for, for university and you don't know where, where the past 19 years have gone because you were so busy marking other kids' papers. You didn't have time for your own kid. And that's that is the knife to the heart, right? Yeah, that's, that, that's the emotional connection. And that is what we are craving and that's storytelling. Right. And that is what makes you um, as a, as a marketer mm -hmm. effective. And that's what makes you as a, a, someone who's reaching out to the media as being effective because humans want stories. It's sure. something we have done since time immortal around the fire pit, right? So yeah. if you can tell that story and get that emotional connection, you're no, you're not, you're not a SaaS company. You are about making families stronger. Got it. Thank you so right. much. I never looked at it that way. Larissa, there's two more questions. Do you want to sure. deal with more content or deal with the questions? I, let's, I mean, do you guys want my want me to answer the questions? Like, I don't know. And, and we can continue on with the, with the content because I can run through the content pretty quickly. So why don't we do one question and then back to you for content and then we'll okay. have more questions later. A okay. question from Ross is, do you have any resources to find phone numbers instead of emails? Okay, Find here's the that lead is focused on emails. Thank you. Yes, you want to email. You want to email because here is the thing. No one picks up the phone anymore. This, no one wants to talk to you on the phone. Don't even go there because you're not going to get anywhere. You have to send an email. Here's the thing. I'm going to tell you something. This is a really mind blowing. Are you ready for this? The average journalist gets between 53 to 300 emails per day with a pitch. All right. They, the last thing they want is someone they've never heard of. They've never, they have no idea who they are calling them on the phone. I can say this because I was a journalist. We are notoriously cranky because we're on a deadline. We have our, our the editor is always right here. Are you done with your story yet? Imagine having to write a, a blog post every single day from scratch. That is what a journalist is up against. The last thing they want to do is answer your answer their phone with from someone they have no idea who you are. The best thing you can do is to email them, send them another email within a week if you have not heard from them, very politely saying, "Hey, I I know you're super busy. I'm just bumping this up to the top of your inbox." If it's something that is really newsworthy, like uh, something like, "Oh my gosh, like I just discovered the cure for cancer." You might want to call them, but other than that, they don't want to hear from you on the phone. And that's the quickest way to get blacklisted is to bother them with on their, in their personal space, because they guard that very carefully. 
Okay, so yes, please do not call them. I'll hold the next questions until a little bit later. Okay, I don't want you, I just want, I want to give you guys the best way to do this. So please, yeah, email, 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 email. That is the way that we do it. Okay, we used to fax, like when I started doing this back in 1993, we used to fax and, um, and then follow up with a phone call, but that has all changed because of email. Okay, now we're talking about research mode, okay? So again, what publications are resonating with your, your story angle? Read the stories by those writers, okay? Get familiar with them. Know what they're writing about. Know the voice that they're using. I'll give you a really quick example. Um, you're not gonna pitch the same story the same way to Cosmopolitan that you would to Women's Day. Two very, they're both women's publications. They have two very different audiences and voices. It's just like, Say something happened to you, you went to the grocery store today and something interesting happened. You come home, you tell your spouse and you use a certain way of talking. You tell the same story to your five-year-old. You're gonna tell it in a very different way. Then you, maybe you know, you, you're talking on the phone to your best buddy that you've had since high school. You're gonna tell that same story, but in a different way again. It's the same with the media. Same story, but you tailor it to that particular audience. So this is why it's important to do your research and know who are you talking to? How do they approach their audience? What does their audience, who is their audience? What are they interest? How do they talk to them? What kind of language do they use? If you can nail that, then you are going, you're going to start seeing a lot of success. Okay, Twitter, again, get into their Twitter feed and there's their find that lead as uh, the Chrome extension. Okay. Now we're gonna start pitching them. Lottery gets you everywhere. Reporters are people too. And they just wanna know that they're doing a good job. If you can take a few minutes and actually research the, what they're doing and give them a compliment, it's going to go a long, long way. So if they've accomplished something or won an award, let them know. Even just something as simple as like, hey, I really enjoyed your article last week about blah. It, this point you brought up about X really made me think, well done. So just give them a little compliment, make it real because that's going to, to make them feel like you actually have an interest in their job and it's going to go quite a long way. Now you wanna make it about you without being cocky. So I, I say this is a time to release the humble brag. You need to know that you are legitimate, but in a nonchalant way. So for example, uh, you could write like, I've dedicated the profits from the sales of my book to building a school in remote uh, village of Africa. That shows that you are legitimate, you have a book, you're making money off of it, and that you also have a heart of gold. Okay, so who's going to argue with that? You want to show you're serious, but in a way that you're not being a show off. Okay, and again, Never feel like you have to hide your talents. This is not the time to be shy. Publicity is about letting people know that you are really good at what you do. Do not say I'm the best because that's the fastest way to turn off the media, but you have to let them know you are competent and you have an expertise. That is how to approach it. Don't be bra braggadocious, just be real. Okay, don't, don't hold back on your accomplishments, on your expertise, on your, um, your, your training, what you've accomplished for your clients. Do not hold back, but just don't go over the top and be like, yes, I have like the best thing since sliced bread. Okay, you also wanna tie it into something that relates to what they are doing. Again, this is all about serving their audience. If it's not on point for their audience, don't even go there because it's just gonna be a waste of time. And finally, when you pitch, you wanna finish off with a question. This is important because as humans, we hate an open loop. So when, you, when we are faced with an open loop, like say, you know, the, the cliffhanger on the, the TV, it's like, oh, tune in next week to find out what happens. That is an open loop. We are curious like cats. We need to know what happens next so we can close that loop. Ending your pitch with a question is an open loop. So it's gonna bother them because they wanna close that loop. It's just a, it's a psychological thing. 
but you want to make it about serving their audience. Again, it's not about you. It's not about them. It is about the audience. So this is the most powerful sentence you can say. Do you think your audience would be interested in a story about blah? And you'll leave it at that. That's all you need to do. So this is it, how we put this all together in practice. Subject, for example, congrats on winning reporter of the year, Bob. I'm calling the, the reporter out by name. I'm giving him a compliment. I'm showing I have done my homework. Maybe he hasn't won an award. You could just, in this case, say like, um, give like a nice title, something that is going to pique their interest. Like you think about BuzzFeed or like those titles, you know, the crazy magazine at the checkout counter of, of uh, grocery stores that you would look at it and you're kind of like, oh, I have to know, I need to know more. That's what you want to try and get with that title. It's the same for like emails, right? Like the more interesting you can make that title, the more likely you are to get opened. All right, so first paragraph, you want to reference something that they have written or their podcast or their radio show or whatever to show that you are paying attention. My example is, I read your article in last Sunday's Times about the homeless situation in LA and it really hit the nail on the head for me. Uh, I'm in an area of town that has seen a huge surge of homelessness in the past six months. And the public health crisis you outlined um, will hopefully spur city council into action. So right there, I have referenced their article. I've made it wise relevant to me and it shows that I'm paying attention. Next paragraph. In fact, I was so impressed by your piece. I looked you up and saw you on Reporter of the Year. Huge congratulations on your achievement. That shows I'm interested in them and I've, I'm giving them a compliment. Next is that connection, making that community. I see you're also a fellow lover of rescue dogs. I have three and they are the most amazing pets. Nice to see you advocate to purchase, to uh, adopt, not buy. You know, try and find something. Are they like, did they like the same sports teams? Did they do this, go to the same university as you? Find that connection. Because again, you, you're trying to make yourself stand out from that 53 to 300 other pitches they're getting every day. Okay, now you have, this is the next paragraph is where you cement your authority. I recently published a book, The Importance of Being Honest about the help, uh, about the need for real talk and relationships. I'm donating 10% of all the proceeds to the Times bestseller to the LASPCA. So again, it's that humble brag. Okay, last paragraph, you want to bring in the pitch. My research for the book highlights why citizens need to have open lines of communication with policymakers, just as you outlined in your last piece. Now, this is important because you want to show that your story angle is a continuation of what they have been writing about. It's not a carbon copy, it's extending that conversation. So again, it's about serving the audience. Last sentence, do you think this is something your, your audience, audience would be interested in? Sign it off, your name, uh, you know, put in your, your email address, your website, your social media, and your phone number, and that is it. So you can see this is something very simple. They can scan it in a second, and you're keeping it with all the important information. So that, that's all you need to do. You do not have to go into like writing war and peace because they will not read it. Keep it really short and sweet. Okay, so a little bonus for you, something called HARO, help a reporter out. And this is a great way to get free PR, even without having to pitch. All right, so what this is, is that this is 80,000 uh, reporters from all over who are looking for experts to interview for their stories. You sign up here, it's helpareporter.com, totally free. Um, you are going to get three emails per day, Monday through Friday, and you just scan through it and you'll be able to see the different stories they're working on and who they're looking to interview. When it comes into your inbox, literally stop what you're doing, spend five minutes to scan. If you find something that is of interest, answer it and then go back onto your day. Um, I cannot tell you how powerful this is. I have one of my students literally her first time doing this last week, got into business.com. Uh, you know, I've had, we've gotten to um, uh, insider, what, businessinsider.com. One of my clients, we pitched her. She didn't, she didn't get into the article for entrepreneur, 
but they turned around and said, hey, uh, I'm actually writing a book for HarperCollins that's coming out in fall 2021, and we want to include you in the book. Um, you know, like Forbes, New York Times, uh, Good Morning America, it's this, everyone uses this. So this is a very powerful way to start getting your PR out there. What you wanna do is create a boilerplate. So you're gonna take your, your you know, literally it's your who, what, where, when, why, and, and just boil it down into two or three sentences and just put that either as a draft in your inbox or on something that you can cut and paste. Uh, so in my case, it's like, you no, know, my name is Larissa Banting. I have 15 years experience of a wedding planner. You wanna show who you are, why you're an expert, put in your website. Uh, if you've won any kind of awards, so that which I've done here and and then just why you would you know hey I'd love to help you with your article that's all you need to do it's literally you just need to show them why you are an expert to be listened to okay <clears throat> this is literally what the summary would look like in a, in a haro so in this case uh, this is a story about what to do if you're tired all the time you can see the reporter is M Missy Wilkinson she's from the media outlet is called Thrillist the email um, with, with Harro, it always goes through Harro. So uh, you don't have the direct access to the, the, the actual reporter. There is a deadline, pay attention to that. However, the faster you can get this in, the better, because they will literally get hundreds of people answering. Think about yourself. If you've put uh, I know, a recall out for someone to, you know, a job application, the first 10, maybe 20 people you're paying attention to, after that, you're just kind of like, oh God, another one. It's the same for the reporter. If you can be one of the first 10 or 20 people out of the gate, you have a much higher chance of being in the article. So then the query, they will expand upon what they're looking for. In this case, this was pretty simple. They're looking for um, what to do if you're tired all the time. Now, often they will have uh, specific people they are looking for, specific qualifications. So in this case, we're saying medical professional, please you know, explain the most common reasons people have problems with low, low energy. If they're asking for a medical doctor and you're not a medical doctor, do not answer because it's just wasting your time and theirs. The thing about Harro is, and anything with the media, it's like a train station. There's another train coming in a couple of minutes. So if you miss one, it's not a big deal. There's plenty more stories coming. Okay, so what you wanna do is you wanna be quick, make sure you're a good fit. When you write the pitch, keep it short and to the point. Uh, just you know, use this, this, the query in the subject line, reframe the question, include your boilerplate that you have sitting there in your draft, and then answer it. Like maybe three short points, but make sure they're really well written because I'd say about 90% of the time, that they will literally cut and paste your answer into their story. So don't use point form. And you also wanna make sure it's like great grammar and spelling. Um, also make sure that you could have how they can connect with you. I put like your email as well as a cell phone number because again, they're always on deadline and they might want to interview you. So if they can call you, make sure you, you have some number that they can get in touch with you and also thank them. Okay, so here's like the sample of the answer. There's my, I always put Haro and then the, the whatever the query was. Let's say, you know, hi, whatever the person's name is. I put my boilerplate in, in reference to your query on how to, how to cut the guest list. Include three or four short sentences. Let me know if I can be, a, uh, help you with anything more. Okay, and this is important because it lets them know that you are willing to be uh, research. If, if they need more help, they can reach out to you. Doing this has put me on the Rolodex of journalists, like literally where they now contact me and be like, hey, Larissa, I have an article coming out tomorrow. Can you please answer, you know, X, Y, Z? So they now come to me. This is a great place to be. And it just came from Haro. So never underestimate how powerful this is. Sign it off with your name, your title, business name, link to your website, phone number, email, and then your, um, your social media, okay? Do not include, like don't forget to answer the question. Do not send attachments. 
Do not be salesy. This is not about you pitching your business or your product. You are there to answer their question. Nothing more. Okay. Don't go into, hey, I've got this great thing coming out or, hey, I have this great offer. They don't care. They want just the answer to their question because they are writing an article and they're looking for some expert advice. Do not be obvious or cliche. They're looking for the really expert ex, uh, you know, advice they could not find themselves. So if it's something that anybody and their dog would give that same advice, don't give it. Give them the $1,000 bit of advice. What would you charge $1,000 for? That's what you put in. Because then they are going to, you are going to give them the information that's going to be like, oh my gosh, like I have to use this. Don't miss a deadline. And then finally, don't harass the journalist. If you have the journalist's name, do not follow up saying, hey, am I in your article? Hey, when's the article coming out? Just let it go. You, you just answer the HARO, release it. And then if, 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 they, if they use you, fantastic. If they don't, there's another one coming. Quick tip, go into Google Alerts and create an alert for your name as well as your business. Because if you start using Haro, chances are that you are going to get into articles and you won't know because the journalists will not let you know because they don't know. They write the article, they give it to their, their editor, it gets published and they're already on to the next story. They have no idea about the story they wrote last week. So I cannot tell you how many times I have found out I've been in an article because of Google Alerts. So um, this is a really powerful tool and it's free. Okay, you do Question. want to do this. Mm -hmm. Question uh, uh, from uh, Ven, how effective is CISION to release PR releases and do you recommend it? Okay, Sizion. Okay, Sizion actually is um, part of the of, of HARO, like the, they, that's part, it's a, it's a sister part of, of uh, HARO. Um, Cizian is a platform, well, it's a media database, but you can also have them like release, a a, do a media release out to uh, their database. Um, this is what I recommend. The, a media release is, is great if you want to get a quick win. I mean, I do this for my clients. I will write the media release. I, I send it out to like 400 media outlets who will publish it on their websites. That is going to give SEO, you know, back to the website. It's going to give them the Google, uh, you know, indexed pages. If someone were to go and type their name into Google, those pages will come up because that media release is published there. It gives them the ability to turn around and put the media logos um, of where it has been published. So, you know, media, you know, usually it's like, you know, Market Watch, CBS, NBC, whatever. But the likelihood of a journalist seeing that media release and then turning around and writing an article from it is like 0 0.001. It's not like the old days, like back in the 90s, before we had, you know, everyone on the internet, we used to do, we used to take the media release, we'd, we'd fax it to the newsroom. And then the editor or whoever was in the newsroom would get the, the media release and then be like, hey, you know, so-and-so, here's a story that you should follow up on. Times have changed because now you are, it's become much more egalitarian. Now anyone can reach out to a journalist. The journalists are not in the newsroom, right? Like they're not sitting around waiting for a news release to come out. So the press release is not as powerful as it used to be. And you're going to find much more success by taking this, this laser focused approach to pitching specific outlets and specific journalists, as opposed to throwing a, a press release out and hoping that it's spaghetti that might stick on a wall. Did that answer your question? Yeah, no further questions. <laughs> okay, all right. So uh, when you do get published, Okay, so this is the, the things you do want to do with Haro. You want to be succinct. You want to offer that, the, again, the $1,000 tip. You want to stay positive. When you do get published, put it everywhere. 
share it on social media and tag the journalist and the outlet because it's going to look good on you. It's also going to look good on the journalist. It's going to look good on, on the outlet. It's going to buy you a lot of goodwill. And it also will give you, it'll, it's like a snowball, right? It starts to like, they'll retweet it, they'll repost it, and that helps you get out there as well. Make sure you, you put it on your website and on your blog. Also, I would make sure that you can put the link in to an email out to your list because it's not just about you attracting new business, it's about you cementing your, your authority with your current clients and customers, right? Because the more they see that you're in the media, the more that they are reassured that, oh my gosh, yeah, you're a total expert and like you're like in all these amazing outlets, like I am doing business with a total rock star. And finally, make sure that you thank the journalist just a simple email like, hey, Bob, thank you so much for including me on your last story. I you know, let him know you've shared it with all of your people and just remind him I'm happy to help you in any, any further way that I can. That little tiny bit of courtesy is going to get you a lot of goodwill. And that's it. That's all you need to get featured and famous. And this is something that you can start doing literally tomorrow. Okay, so that is it. And do you do you have some irresistible offer to make to the real-time audience? I do. Um, I have uh, something that is, let me just grab it up here. Um, it's, I have something that, that is a freebie that you can get started. It is called, um, the, it's uh, how to 365 days to power up your publicity. And this is, you know how there's like Talk Like a Pirate Day and National Diabetes Month and whatnot. Um, this will give you everything. So you can start looking at this and finding where you can like slot in your business or your expertise to make uh, it, you know, something that they're going to use for that particular day. So if, for example, if it's like, I don't know, National Taco Day and you have an, a Mexican restaurant you can easily pitch a story about how to make the best tacos that you won't, you know, you'll ever have for National Taco Day. Uh, if you're someone who, um, I don't know, like maybe it's National Secretary's Day, you could, or maybe you have a VA company, you could say, here's like the top five ways that you can maximize having a virtual assistant to, to grow your business, um, you know, in, in the next month. So, you know, it's just little ways that you can start putting your business in there. Um, so that's the freebie. And uh, then if you really want to take it a next first step, um, I have something that is called uh, Pitch Perfect. And this is, uh, it's, you know, 20, $27. And um, you can uh, start, it's all the tools that you need to start uh, your doing PR today. So it's like 600 uh, story ideas and you can start taking them and pitching them to all different media uh, without having to really you know, think too in depth where, what kind of story can I, can I pitch to them? So that's what I have for you today. So the, the first link is a freebie and the second link is 27 Canadian or American dollars? It's American, yeah, it's 27 dollars. American. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, it's um, 8.05, so uh, we are going to wrap up. Uh, Larissa, thank you. That was, uh, that was more information about publicity than I have been able to gather in the last 70 years. Thank you on behalf of VBN very, very, very much. Well, thank you so much Audience, for having me. Uh, Larissa and I want to thank you for giving us your Thursday evening. I'm pretty darn sure that you've had a very high return on investment. Uh, for the time you've spent with us. Good night, one and all. And thank you to, to, uh, to, to everyone who's concerned. Good night. <laughs>